Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at the abstract base class of a doubly linked list and how it's put together so we can use it as a framework for building other data structures, including stacks, queues, circular doubly linked lists, as well as actually the double linked list implemented class. So let's go ahead and take a look at the header file for this. We can start building from there and go and take a look at the component pieces and methods that are attached to it and then see how it works with that. As you can see right here, we have the actual class definition section of our doubly linked list class. Um, this is the abstract class we're going to be using as the framework for this. So we're making it abstract so we can require ourselves to actually do a fully implemented version of the abstract methods that are different as we go through and look at the actual code that goes along with that. So for our template right here, when we look at the actual class header, we have three components in our data member section. We have a bidirectional node of type pointer front and end, as well as an int for size so we can keep track of how big our list is. We have in our public uh, section, we have a virtual method of void add. And we have a purely virtual method by adding equals zero right here, as well as a virtual type remove method, also forced to be uh, fully virtual. And so we do that by having the keyword virtual. It says, oh, this method is not going to be implemented in this uh, specific class. But we also say that it requires that this class is a abstract class by putting the equals zero as part of that definition header right there. And so it means we, this class itself is forced to be an abstract class. We cannot instantiate a doubly linked list. This is an abstract class. And so we could um, make sure that we have that specific. We have a constructor for this class as well as our virtual destructor because the overload on that. The destructor itself is virtual because it will be implemented for all the subclasses and the actual destructor itself can be called from within this as well. I'm not assigning the equals zero on this because the actual destructor itself is not something we're going to be inheriting directly. We have a couple of helper methods that are going to go along with this, and these methods are going to be the same across all of our different subclasses. And so I'm not going to have them be virtual. In fact, we're going to implement them here inside our abstract base class. Because this is one of the features of C++, you can have a fully um, programmed and developed method that you can call in its subclasses as part of the abstract base class. All it requires is that at least one method is set to be equal zero as one of those virtual methods. So we can know that it's not defined, and we must actually define it in the, throughout that. So in order to build this doubly linked list, we have to have a way of looking both forward and back. And we use that with the idea of our bidirectional node. That bidirectional node is we're going to look at actually first. We can actually see how we're going to put this together. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to go up here to our model project and go to our nodes and then go to bidirectional node. And so within our bidirectional node, we see we have our lovely um, public and private data section here within the node class. As you can see that the bidirectional node inherits from node, it's a public inheritance we have with that, and it's of node type that we're inheriting from. In the private data member section, we are going to explicitly define that it has a pointer of bidirectional node type called next pointer, as well as a bidirectional um, type pointer called previous. And so we have those uh, lovely little things that we're going to be using to go along with that. And then we have in our public section, we have the constructor, a, of a default constructor, a constructor that takes a data member as its parameter, as well as a uh, constructor that takes a, a data member of type, as well as a pointer for previous and next. And so we have three separate constructors for this, and we'll see how that goes along with the original node constructor, so we can review that really quickly. We have a reference to return a uh, get next pointer and get previous pointer, because we'll need to actually return the previous values that are within that or the next value on that, so we need to know which one we're pointing to, whether it's the previous one or the next one, and you have to be able to take care of that. We also have to be able to set and, um, the, both the previous and next pointers by passing a new pointer object, so we can actually attach a pointer as to what it's going to be going to. And the, if you notice right these, these are also bidirectional node pointers, so we can't simply just put a regular node pointer in there. You will also notice that explicitly we do not have a data member for type right here. Because of the fact that it inherits from node, it has access to that data um, of type through its public accessor methods. And so because we have inside node already, I have my lovely type node data, and I have its associated get node data method and set node data method. Because we have those inherited methods we can access from that using public inheritance inside C++, there's no need to actually have that explicitly spelled out within that or have a separate data member for it. We can simply call those existing methods and go from there. So going back over here, we take a look at the bidirectional node. Let's go look at our implementation of the constructors here so we can see some inheritance with that. And so we have in our constructor section, you can see that we have right here, we have our uh, template class type header that goes along with all of our lovely methods of using a template when we're doing the idea of using a template of generic structure. And so on the default constructor, I create a bi bidirectional node constructor. It inherits from the node constructor. And so it calls the node constructor's default implementation with no parameters. And then it specifically sets this selector next pointer to be a null pointer because I'm initializing the bidirectional node of type and as well as this selector previous 
does B also be null pointer? Because I'm sending both its previous and its next pointers to both be null. We look at our second constructor here inside our bidirectional node type. And as you can see, our second constructor um, is, of, of course, by, um, is in the class bidirectional node of type. And we can tell it's a constructor because it's the same name as the actual class itself and takes of type data. Where we see the actual difference right here is we're calling the previous class's constructor or the superclass's constructor by saying colon node of type and then data. And so if you notice right here, when I click on the data right here, I'm indicating with these lovely little dashed lines, that's the same parameter we saw in the actual constructor formally uh, specified of type data right here for bidirectional node. And then it gets passed as a parameter to the superclass constructor. So it'll initialize the node itself, its data, by using that lovely parameter passing a mechanism. Because um, the next pointer and previous pointer, however, are of type bidirectional node, we want to make sure we initialize those explicitly using the this selector next pointer equals null pointer and this selector previous equals uh, null pointer as well. Because we want to explicitly say that, oh, that's what it's pointing to, we want to make sure we're having the correct information directly linked. And for finally, our third constructor, this is the constructor we build when we know both who it's pointing to and who it's pointing from as well. And so that's where we have the idea of a bidirectional node passing it of type data. It has also a reference to the previous pointer and its next pointer. And then because the singular link node only has a single pointer, we simply call the two parameter constructor of node passing it data and next because this next right here will point to the next pointer, but the previous one has no associated information we can simply use for that. Now I'm also explicitly saying that this right here where I say this selector next pointer equals next because I'm explicitly saying that the next pointer that belongs to the bidirectional node is assigned explicitly as well as the previous pointer is also being explicitly assigned. On our getters and setters, the getters and setters are just like we would see normally within any single class. Notice again we do not have anything for the node data because that's already handled by the get node data and set node data of the super class. So we don't have to rewrite those, there's no need to do that because there's no change to them at all. For template class type, we have a bidirectional node of type um, pointer, and we're going to either get next pointer returns next pointer, or get previous pointer, which will return previous. The same thing for set next pointer and set previous pointer. They take a pointer as a parameter and assign that value to the appropriate data member right there. Really not a big change. So we've now looked at the bidirectional node that we're making up for this. As you can see, we've um, hashtag included that as our uh, first line after the actual definition statement for the class. So those bidirectional nodes we just looked at that inherit from node are what make up the components of our doubly linked list class. And so we've looked at the actual beginnings of that. Again, reviewing the actual class header itself, we have the pointers that go to front and end that are part of that, as well as a track of size, just like we saw within a regular singly linked list that we were using as a non-abstract type. We have some previously defined methods that we're going to be looking at. We have our constant method of get size, get front, and get end, and we'll be using those if we have a co uh, copy constructor. They need to be const because anytime we use a const parameter, we have to have a const method to access that information, and so that's where it comes into play. We also have setters, so we can adjust the front size and end of our various data members, so we can use that for that. And so we're going to take a look at that as we go through. Now, with our constructor, our constructor of the doubly linked class, regardless of which doubly linked um, implementation we are going to follow, will have the same basic structure for as with all lists. And so we're going to go ahead and implement it right here in our abstract base class, because even though it's abstract, we want to be able to have access to that information explicitly. And so we have the this selector front, size, and end are all initialized to the correct data member value. Size is set to zero. Front and end are both set to null pointer. And we'll use that for all of our subclass implementations. We also have our, um, our destructor. We're going to go ahead and implement it with simply just an open set of closed squiggles because there's not going to be any actual code in there at the default level because when we simply create an abstract base class, nothing is, um, no memory is allocated, so there's no need to actually explicitly delete anything. But because I'm not leaving it as a purely virtual function, I want to go ahead and give it the actual implementation for that so we have that. And it looks just like the idea of an empty Java interface method we use simply because we don't want to actually worry about it. We then look at our get size, get front, and get end methods. As you can see, they're going to be like just any of our other constant getters and setters. It simply has the data type specified as the um, data type return type right here, followed by the class that it inherits from, or sorry, that it's owned by. So it's the data type that it's returning, the class that owns it, in this case, a double linked list of type, and then the scope resolution indicator to say what the name of the method that belongs to that is, in this case, get size. And we simply return size, front, or end based on that. And because these methods are inherited and the changes themselves don't have any big reference to it or worry about it, we'll define them here immediately and then go from there. The same approach goes for our setters. We will be using the same approach to set size, set front, and set end throughout all of our subclasses. And because those setters are going to be the exact same, let's go ahead and implement them right here inside our abstract base class type. 
And so with what we've done right here is we've created an abstract um, doubly linked list. This class is abstract because it has the equals zero after the virtual for these two methods that are explicitly defined right here for both add and remove because those two methods are gonna be implemented in every single subclass of doubly linked list. Because those methods have to be explicitly defined for their appropriate subtype, especially for the idea of stacks and queues where they have specific implementations that define them, these are set as a virtual method right here so they can be redefined as needed. We leave them explicitly defined as um, explicitly mentioned as a virtual method, which makes it so that doubly linked list is an abstract type. So we have to actually do a, um, implement those methods for all but subclasses. And we're doing that so we can show the idea of using an abstract data type within our abstract um, template types that we've already been using. And so we'll go ahead and we'll be looking at the idea later on in this uh, course of how to do the, both the queue, the stack, a circular linked list, as well as a more formal implementation of a double linked list so we can see the ideas of how to do some timing and measurement of stuff. So that's where we're going to go with the idea of using a double linked list. We set it up as an abstract list, again, using this uh, C++ keyword of virtual, and then explicitly define it as an abstract by using the equals zero after the formal definition of the class header. We'll go ahead and continue on from there. Thanks, and have a great day.